Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around us. There are a couple of stories for us to dive into. Arsenal have received an agreement from Joao Felix. He's told George Mendes that it is okay for him to sign for Arsenal in this January. But then the big story is also that Arsenal are now the only team technically in the race to sign Joao Felix. Manchester United are pushing hard to sign Wout Wigost. Uh, the the Dutch international and of course Chelsea are also trying to sign Marcus Thuram. The rest of the clubs actually don't want to come near near this uh, this deal because it has very high fees in terms of a loan deal. We'll be discussing that um, as well. Fabrizio Romano has just confirmed that there are no ultimatums and deadlines on the Shakhtar Donetsk deal for Mikhail Modric. So the deal could be done even on the 31st of January. Now I'm asking you in the comment section should Arsenal be a little bit proud and put an ultimatum for Shakhtar to either reject or accept our bid? Let me know in the comment section because this is utterly disrespectful. Shakhtar going around, uh, they have our bid, but they're going around just, you know, um, talking to other clubs, flirting with other clubs, uh, like we actually do not have other things to do in the market. So let me know, should we set an ultimatum for Shakhtar? They either take the money or we walk away. Let me know in the comment section uh, below. But Fabrizio says there are no deadlines and ultimatums. And then we are also going to be talking about Danilo on the podcast today. Because according to Gold Brazil, a very strong source when it comes to Brazilian players and transfers and updates, it says now three clubs are suspected to have placed a big bid on the table for Palmeiras. That is Atletico Madrid. Monaco and the high suspects in this case are Arsenal. We're going to be discussing that as well. Hit the like button for me. Let's get this video to mm, 900 likes. Subscribe to the podcast as well. Let's get the channel to 70,000 subscribers as soon as we can. Now, let's get into it. Let's start off with the Joao Felix story because it's been a very, very, uh, you know, Busy 48 hours with Joao Felix, George Mendes, Atletico Madrid, and Arsenal. But this is what I can confirm now. Uh, Joao Felix has given Arsenal an agreement and the green light to actually negotiate with Atletico Madrid um, and sign him. He is okay with Arsenal. He's okay with joining the project. As you can see here, some of the quotes. Joao Felix wants to join Arsenal this winter and has had assurances of playing time from Mikel Arteta. He loves the project and would like to help Arsenal push for the title. But clubs still discussing about the structure of payments personal terms not expected to be an issue here so that is the first story and um i kind of think this was always gonna happen so um we've been told up uh, time out time again for, by fabrizio romano by david on stay that joao felix has already told uh, atletico madrid he's gonna be leaving he doesn't want to stay uh and they should do whatever they can in their power to actually let him go um and he wants game time. He wants a place where he can actually feel loved, a place where he can actually call home, a, you know, a, a place where he's going to revive his career uh, and turn it around. But of course, at the same time, he wants to join a club that is able to fulfill his ambitions, that is number one, but then also able to pay his wages that, so he cannot go back to uh, Benfica because he wants, to, uh, to, he wants game time. And that is where Arsenal come in. We've always tried to talk to him. You know, David Einstein did say that we want to sign both of them, Modric and Joao Felix. So we've talked to him intensively. And finally, Mikel Arteta has had another player agree to sign for us in this winter. Now, look. This doesn't mean we, had, uh, we have won the rest. This, uh, this doesn't mean uh, Arsenal have now signed him. Another club can also come and receive an agreement from Joao Felix. There's so many other you know, attra attractive clubs out there. Maybe Liverpool, maybe Barcelona, maybe uh, Chelsea. I, I mean, any other club. But what I can confirm today as well is that many other clubs are distancing themselves from this deal. They believe Atletico Madrid is trying to sell them a player they actually do not understand. First and foremost, Atletico asked for 20 million euros in terms of a loan fee for six months. All clubs said, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely atrocious. We are not even going to enter negotiations for this one. Man United, for example, have uh, have already gone on to... Uh, talk about players like Vicente Abubakar, uh, players like Wewood Wigos. Today, Fabrizio has been saying that um, 
uh, uh, you know, United have, you know, sent in their official interest, um, you know, for Wellwood Weakest. And, 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 you know, uh, probably Burnley will have to consider it if, um, you know, all things go in the right direction, right? So, Man United are looking at other options. Kolomwane, uh, Vicente Abubakar, Wellwood Weakest, and a couple of other players. Chelsea... A hell benched on signing Marcus Thuram today. Fabrizio Romano again on court offside uh, on the daily brief. He has said Chelsea have open talks to sign Marcus Thuram. Now, if they go to sign Marcus Thuram for 10 million euros, it means the Joao Felix deal uh, is none of their business. It's none of their concern, all right? Um, and then we'll talk about Chelsea later on in the video because, you know, they are the only competition we have for Mikhailo Modric. So, it, it, technically, that leaves Arsenal as the only club with genuine interest. And uh, Atletico Madrid have apparently told George Mendes to come back, talk to Arsenal, and make sure that we firm up our initial uh, interest. We firm up our initial offer. And this is going to be very, very crucial. Because the latest has, uh, the, uh, the latest on this deal um, actually shows that Arsenal will have to pay £75 million pounds as an obligation if we take Joao Felix on loan. All right, so that is the latest. We will have to pay 75 million as an obligation for Joao Felix, uh, as um, you know, if we take him on loan. And then the other thing is that we'll have to part with around 9.5 million euros um, this January. Now, I think this is what Atletico are trying to do here. They know no club can give you 100 million euros, uh, you know, for 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 Joao Felix right now. He's no longer the player that um, he was. There's no question he will get back to those levels. There's no question he's a really, really massive talent. But right now, all clubs are going to go, um, he's not done well in the past two years. Why would we spend 100 million euros uh, on him? All right. And I think Atletico Madrid do understand that. So what they have done here is they've gone... Can any club give us seventy? Uh, can any club give us twenty million euros in terms of a loan fee uh, in January? And then six months later, you commit to giving us seventy-five million pounds. You know what that means? It means you have re literally paid one hundred million euros uh, for Joao Felix in a space of six months. Brilliant business from Atletico Madrid, but I don't think Arsenal are really, really gonna fall for that. But this is what I think Arsenal could do. We could sign him on loan. We for around five million euros, uh, and then take on his wages, and then bring him at the Emirates Stadium, tr talk to him, uh, cancel him, um, you know, show him the bigger picture, reduce his wages to around two hundred or one hundred and ninety thousand pounds per week, and then sign him for seventy million pounds. I think that would be a very very good deal. I don't know if you guys um, actually agree with me. Let me know in the comment section if I if if it really really makes sense, but. I, I kind of feel like it makes sense. Sign him for 70 million pounds and then get him on loan for 5 million. What that, 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 that does is you could get him, he helps you win the league, number one, and then sign him on a permanent. He will only be 24 in the summer. So, um, you know, sign him on a permanent deal and then use him for six seven years it is something that i really really think uh makes a lot of sense okay so um george mendes is still working on the price to be lowered um that is um confirmed as well uh atletico madrid and arsenal have also held talks and more talks are, are going to be held as well uh between the two clubs the, the, i think the dis the discussion is about can we lower the price? Can we get the, can we get Atletico uh, to lower the price? Just like you've seen here, um, I will actually share this with you. Uh, the, uh, Diego Simeone doesn't want Felix at Atletico Madrid, right? Uh, so this is the quote. Simeone is becoming ir irritated with Atletico Madrid board as he made it clear for some time now. He wants Felix gone. He, um, he wants a deal to be in place, a sub, so he can spend um, January trying to sign a new center forward. Felix also pushing to leave the club uh, as well. So this is the situation around this deal. And I feel like this actually works perfectly for Arsenal. Player wants to leave. The manager wants him out of his project right now. So... The, the pressure only, in the internal pressure only, uh, just justifies that Atletico Madrid will come down, they will listen, and they will actually take a very, very huge loss. Uh, look, it's only natural that uh, you understand a club like Atletico. They don't want to make a loss, uh, a huge loss. They, they're definitely going to make a loss, but they don't want to make a huge loss on... Um, 
uh, on the player because they bought him at almost a, a club record fee, right? So that's why they're trying to, you know, twist this deal, do this and that. But in the end, in my opinion, they have nothing. Uh, they have nothing to do. So the, the the discussions on the structure of payment are still um, are still going on. Seventy five million pounds, um, an obligation to buy, and around eight to nine million pounds in terms of uh, um, in terms of a loan fee what do you think about that um, is it a risk we should enter actually I think if you get to our Felix and you fail to get M Mikhail Modric you've done well uh, to be honest you've, you've really really done well because Felix for me is um I, 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 I would want to consider him as a, a Diogo Jota kind of player literally he does everything right the difference between between him and Jota is the uh, Although both of them come from Portugal, Felix is more talented, and Felix is uh, is um you know Felix's technical ability is actually in, through the roof. But Diego Jota has come to the Premier League and has actually worked out uh, and is proven to be a success. So you never know, okay? You just never know what's gonna ha come out of the bag. Now let's talk about uh, the big man. Shakhtar and Nastic are getting disappointed by Chelsea on the Mikhailo Modric deal. So first and foremost, uh, Chelsea are now flirting with Marcus Thuram with Fabrizio Romano this morning, confirming that um, they have opened talks to sign Marcus Thuram from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Now, I I've already said this. Where do Chelsea get their money? They have only si they've just signed Badashe from Monaco for around 40 million euros. And now they also want to sign a 100 million euro player in Mikhailo Modric. Where do they get their money that FFP rules don't actually work against them? They, you know, FFP rules don't actually work on them. Where do they get that money, right? So um, what is happening here for me, guys, is that uh, uh, Chelsea are eventually realizing that fighting with Arsenal on Mikhailo Modric might not be the best option. Arsenal have already, uh, have already offered £60 million pounds, uh, for sh to Shakhtar. There is no point in offering more money than £60 million pounds for a player who's played one season in the Champions League, one season, um, you know, in his life. There is no reason. There is no point, right? Look, rivaling Arsenal is good because we're rivals and that just adds the GC um, to the Premier League and everything. They have already stolen our players. Um, Eden Hazard, they took him. Uh, you know, a couple of other players that have actually taken. But, listen to me, but... In my opinion, if Chelsea are trying to do sensible business, if they're trying to do sensible transfers, Mikhail Modric for above 70 million euros is not something you do. It's, it's not something you even think about in your right, you know, in, in your right mind. It, it, is, it is wasting money. It is absolutely wasting money. And we are not in a direct competition with um, Chelsea right now. We are actually fighting with Manchester City and newcastle with all due respect chelsea are 10th on the premier league table so i don't know i, I don't know who they're fighting with uh, maybe aston villa maybe liverpool maybe brentford but it is not arsenal so the situation right here is that um uh, romano says there are no deadlines on this deal so it is not until 10th 7th or 18th it is actually until january 31st brilliant from Shakhtar very very brilliant and listen to me this is why so what they've done here Shakhtar is they've gone we want we have a whole month to discuss with other clubs Arsenal don't put us on pressure okay we have we still have another uh 24 or is it 24 um okay 22 days to the end of the month we will talk to wh whoever we want and if we don't get the deal we want we'll come back and activate um you know your deal and that is why i asked you in the comment section should arsenal be proud should we be a little bit proud and tell Shakhtar, listen you either accept our offer or we walk away as simple as that right you either accept our offer or we walk away or you reject it um and walk away we should set an ultimatum because piers morgan and I really, really love uh, Piers. Um, I did, I did, you know, quote, retweet this on my uh, on my Twitter. Uh, yesterday he said, Arsenal don't have the whole month to sign Mikhailo Modric, so we should they should put an ultimatum to the deal so that if Shakhtar, you know, so, so that Shakhtar feel threatened a little bit, they know no one is going to give them that money right now. No one is giving them that money right now, and they are treating us like shit. 
I, I just I just don't like it. So we either put an ultimatum or we also start actively talking to other prospects. Go and play £60 million pounds, uh, for, for, for Balevacuzin on Moussa Diabe and see their reaction. Try to sign Wilfred Zaha and see his re uh, Crystal Palace's reaction. Try to go and sign Alex Ma San Maxima and see the reaction from Newcastle. When we do that, maybe Shakhtar will feel a little bit threatened. But for now, they are really, really you know, loving it. They are loving life. Um, and finally, Gold Brazil has actually come out and say that uh, there are now three clubs, and I will expand on this story in the next edition uh, of the podcast. There are now three clubs that are, are, are leading the rest to sign uh, Palmeria sees Danilo. Number one is Arsenal, number two is Monaco, and number three is Atletico Madrid. Benfica is another club that um, is interested, but they have not made an official offer yet. So there is an official offer on the table for Palmarias, but that money is believed to have come from Arsenal. Now, like Romano has already said, we do not have a desperate Palmeria side. They are not desperate for money. They have already sold Hendrik and they've got a lot of money uh, you know, at their disposal. So they will sell when they want and they will keep the player until when they feel like. So at the moment, allow me just pinch for you something later on that story. And when I get more, we will expound on it. Nice show. It's been a really, really great show to talk to you guys. Hit the like button for me. Let's, for, uh, let's catch up on Twitter. Kosi Arsenal. Just go to Twitter. Type Kosi Arsenal, you'll find me there. 506 um, followers. We need to get that one to at least 10K. See you soon.